All right, so in this outing, I'm up in northern Massachusetts looking to catch my first cod from the kayak. I've never caught a cod in the kayak before, so it was something I wanted to do. Um, here Grab we're going to be catching mackerel. some fresh mackerel, and I'm going to be baiting them up on my bucktails. Yeah. Uh, that's a two-ounce bucktail, and we're just going to add an extra little soft plastic here and start jigging some deep rocks and see what we catch. That's a good fish. I think so. I think that's a cod? Might be. My first kayak cod. Now it's more like a like a striper. Woo! I got a cod. I got my first kayak cod. Wow. Wow. I don't think I've ever done that before. I've definitely never done that. Wow. My first cod. It's like 22, 23. You think I should release it or I should. What do you think I should do? I'm not really meat hungry, so. Okay. Yep. Then I don't have to worry. Wow. You're correct. It's been a slow morning on the cod, so if I get a big one, I'll release them. It's cute, but it's like. I know that burger will taste way better. I wonder if I hit his pot or I got a fish. Oh, I got a fish. Oh. Yeah, see, that's, that's when you know you have a cod on. Damn. Get that pole. It's a better one. Much better. I think I want a picture of this one. Much better one. Oh, boy. Been in this situation many times in my life already. <laughs> It's not a bad one, man. What's that? It's the brown cod. Okay. Cool fish. All right, I'm, Eric's gonna take a picture of this one for me, just in case I don't get any more. I'm gonna remember this day. I'm gonna be back cod fishing on the kayak within very a very soon period of time. Oh, damn, they take off. Just kind of drag, jigging on some ledges, man. About 75 feet of water, so deep stuff. Up here. Just jigging along. I'm gonna save that waypoint. Light tackle. Bucktailing for cod, man. Another cod. Look at that. This is so cool, man. This is so cool. Nice. Brown cod. Two ounce spro bucktail, strip of mackerel, a little extra jelly action. Very cod. It's very nice of you to join. Come play around, man. I can't believe I got to catch you on a kayak, man. That's so cool. Very nice novelty. So we're headed out of here. That was a blast. I thought that was so much fun. Uh, yeah, I thought that was great. I mean, I never did anything like that before. Uh, so the total for the day was like a dozen, you know, burgals. Uh, this is all deep water stuff. So a dozen burgals, piles of sea ravens, all sorts of, you know, weird fish. I don't know what they were. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I will have to learn their names again. Long horn sculpin, short horn sculpin. We got three cod. Pollock. Got something on the way up. What is it? It's a. Uh, is that a. Oh, hey. It's Pollock. That's a good size Pollock. Yeah? Pollock are good to eat. Alright. I'm game. I'll bleed them out though. Yeah. Are they a little bloody? Uh, yeah, man. A lot of different fish. Mackerel, tons of fish, but, uh, 
Good season starting to build now. Got a real serious front for several days is heading up this way. So, got meat, got film. I had a blast. Thanks to Eric taking me out. All right, so I'm gonna fillet the cod up. I'm doing it at home. It's raining really hard outside right now. I got home kind of late. I didn't get to it. I filleted some of my catch outside. Sun went down, uh, brought the rest home. Uh, so the cool thing is just the novelty of catching a cod on the kayak. It's kind of awesome. Cod is one of the fish I targeted during the winter months uh, in my early 20s, late teenage years. Uh, we used to go out to Block Island to catch those fish. Uh, you know, it was like 20 degrees out, northwest winds 15 to 20. Some people might remember those runs from a few years back. You know, the cod fishing's not the same. But um, yeah, this is like just an awesome novelty for me to get to do and catch on the kayak. I'm definitely going to do that again in the future. Just uh, cod is kind of a special fish to me for that reason, so I will do it again. So let's start filleting the fish up, okay? All right, so I kind of just got home yesterday. I lobbed his head off and gutted it, because uh, well, actually I gutted it before I got in the car. And I just lobbed its head off. Um, there is some meat in here. Yes, you can kind of extract this. Yeah, let's see what I can do there. All right, I see one worm here, right? See that one right there? That's one cod worm. Uh, other than that, I'm going to take the skin off and look at the meat a little closer in a second, but there's not, uh, there's really not, I got two worms on it. Those are your cod worms, make that three. But it ain't bad. Make that four. So we got a few worms on this thing, right? Um, you know, this is what they actually look like. I know you order cod in a restaurant, this is all picked out for you or farmed. I don't know too much about uh, restaurant cod. But we got a few, so they're not hard to take out, so that's not bad. You know, that's about average, I think, is to have a few worms in the meat. Not bad at all. All right, one more side here. Okay, so the rest of this can be used for like a fish stock. That's the stomach meat right there. And there's definitely some meat over there, but, you know, we might have worms kind of hidden in here in that cavity. It makes a great fish stock, but we're going to skip that part and finish working on the fillets. I don't know how he, I've honestly never filleted my own cod before. I've always had mates on party boats do it, so I don't know. How soft is this skin? I think it's pretty soft. It's pretty soft skin. Not much meat left on there. All right, so the way I always learn to remove the worms and kind of investigate with them, is you want to hold the fillets up to the light. And you're usually going to be able to see, because the, the light's going to kind of shine through, I know this looks awkward as hell, but I'm holding this up to the light so I can get an idea how many worms, where they are, to kind of get an idea. I see like three or four right now, and it's hard for me to show you on camera, but I'm holding it up to the light to get really like the light to pierce through the fillet. And this is what's called market size cod, but like I see one right there. I'm sure you could see that on the camera, right? And you can just pop it with a knife. You can use a pair of tweezers. Um, you know, I, I feel like cod is like a messier fish. It's very soft. Um, you're usually just frying it a lot of the time. I know there's other ways to cook it and like bake it. It's a very mild fish. I remember I haven't had it in years and years and years, but I remember it being mega mild. It's really tasty. I remember that too. But um, you know, if somebody doesn't like a fishy fish, this was the this was the one right here. Um, all right, let me see if we got anything hidden here. I'm gonna hold it up to the light again. Get another look at it. We got a lot of these. This can be time consuming. These cod. Uh, these worms, getting them all out. This can start taking quite a bit of time, honestly. But let me just take another quick look at this fillet. See if I missed any. Yeah, if you want to compare what this fish looks like, I'd say walleye is pretty close. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a good eating fish. Everyone knows that. Um, I feel like a fried fish. Like I said, though, it is soft. Um, you know, it's got its own unique flavor to it. All right, so right here are two pollock fillets. Um, I don't know much about Pollock. Uh, I don't think they have worms, but feel free to comment in the section below if they do. Um, you know, the Pollock, whatever reason, seems like the inshore ones don't get that big. This Pollock was maybe, uh, I think he was probably like 16 inches. Alright, so here's my two Pollock fillets. Uh, the meat's definitely darker than the cod. 
I'm going to take the bones out in a second. I don't see any worms in this meat. Um, it does have a slight fishy odor. This is imitation crab meat is made with this and lots of filler and probably some bleach to make it whiter because uh, my imitation crab meat is not that dark ever. So they probably add something to make it much lighter. All right, bones, I'll put it in the pile with the, the cod. And, um, you know, we'll start doing some cooking. thought about a bunch of different ways how to prepare this. So I was thinking maybe beer battering, like going real traditional. Honestly, one of the most simple ways that, you know, I always used to eat cod years back is just um, butter in a pan, good seasoning, and the fish is fresh. So it does not need much, really, to get this going. Um, I'm just going to, I just have some garlic powder, paprika, salt, a little bit of Old Bay, some butter in the pan, some onions. And we're just gonna saute this for a couple minutes and give it a shot. I have not had fresh cod in oh, for, forever, forever. So here's what we're gonna do here. As you see on both sides, get butter going and this should be legit. And don't forget the lowly pollock. All right, so the pan's just got butter in it, some onions in it brown, and the seasoning. Oh no, the camera's fogging up. It's that good. Man, that looks good. Well, we're all done here. Um, you can definitely tell the difference between a pollock, it's like that grayer meat, and the cod. But uh, I got Vic and Danielle here. Never had fresh cod before? I have. I have. Okay. Never had fresh cod before. No. I told them I pulled the worms out. I haven't had fresh cod in years and years and years. So. Is this is going to be as good as I remember it. It is so light, it's like the least fishy fish mm. out there. I understand the mass appeal for this fish. I haven't had it in so long. It's good, don't get me wrong, it's good, but I know why this fish gets trashed, it's flavorless. It's so nothing, light. Nothing it's, spectacular. I mean. No, I think it's it's got its own thing going on, but it's so light. It's like, I don't know, I think it's really good. Blown away out of it. Really? I think, it's, I think it's delicious. Whatever I flavored it with is what it got. But at the same time, it's one of the few fish that are edible with doing nothing. Um, still like a favorite of mine. I don't know, like, cod is legendary. There's been books written about cod. And like, <laughs> there are. Actual, actual books. They're, like, that, cod is like... That have been written. It's like... Published. I could see why it was overfished. Like, it's, it's delicious. I think out of all the catch and cooks I've done though, this is probably in the top three though. Yeah, I think it's walleye, trigger, uh, trigger fish, walleye, cod, maybe. It might be that, com that, those three. I feel like we're insulting this fish by drinking Bud <laughs> It doesn't have much flavor, so it's like people that aren't looking for bluefish, oh uh, yeah, this is like, the, this is the antithesis, antithesis of bluefish. This is like the total opposite of a bluefish. Or any really like porgy, it's very soft, no fishy taste to it. It's like you can market it. It's still way better than tilapia though. Like I'm trying mm -hmm. like getting close to like tilapia. Tilapia is like has like the no flavor. Like this is like this is sweeter and it's got a better texture. But it's like yeah, it's like there's definitely the legendary status of cod as being one of the best and. All right, guys, well, that's going to conclude the cod section. So, um, I don't know. Pollock, was, Pollock wasn't as good. Um, and I always wondered why, because they were always in the same family. And Pollock's invitation crab meat, which you might know or might not know. Sure. It lives up to the hype. It does. There's some fish that don't, but I think cod lives up to the hype. So, All right, guys, if you liked the video, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Catch you next week with another Catch and Cook. We have, for next week, I have Catch and Cook Burgal. Why do I not be a cod? I don't know. I'm gonna find out. Oh, big Connor, dude. Holy. <laughs> dude.